Hey cats, it's Ed, compare the midsole bud here. If it's your first time on the channel, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to try and analyse what makes a great running shoe for me. Are there any factors, at least for me, that elevate a running shoe ahead of the pack? We've got a lot to get through, so let's dive in. Thanks for joining me on the channel. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and help us get to a million subscribers. Might take a while, but you know what I mean? Every little helps. Hit that bell for notifications too, and also give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. I've reviewed lots of shoes on the channel this year, and I started to wonder to myself, are there any factors or specs or any particular features that running shoes have that seem to work better for me? You know, could I build like a Frankenstein shoe that's got all the best factors in it? What are they? Looking through some of the recent models, certain things stick out. The shoes I enjoy tend to gravitate towards the slightly lighter side, perhaps a little bit narrower in the heel, and have a somewhat higher drop than other models. I've managed to focus in on a few models here in today's video that seem to hit the spot for me, and I was quite surprised with the results. Seems to be two groups of shoes that really work very well for my running style. So looking through all the different factors, there's one model that really stands out that just seems to work very well for me. That is the Adidas Adi Zero, Adios 6 and the 7. So a narrower fit here, certainly in terms of the upper. A lot of Adidas shoes seem to have that same feature. I think it's down a little bit to the actual width of the forefoot and the heel. I'd say this is a relatively minimal shoe, by today's standards at least. If we compare this up to something like the Zoom Fly 5, for example, there's much less width in the forefoot and the heel in this one. They've got about 11 centimeters in the forefoot and only eight in the heel. That's a good 1.4 centimeters less width in the forefoot than that Zoom Fly 5. It's a shoe that just doesn't really work for me all that well. I do believe that weight is a bit of a factor for me. It does seem to actually influence in some way the performance I'll get out of a shoe. I'm a very slight guy. I don't weigh all that much, though I'm quite tall. I do seem to gravitate towards lighter shoes. Not that I've got anything against heavier shoes. There are some models that are heavier that I've really enjoyed recently, but just in terms of performance and enjoyment, I think the lighter ones do tend to work better for me. I think something that stands out about this shoe is that 259 gram weight in my UK size 11, US size 12. It's only the Endorphin Speed 3 that has a similar weight in this sort of category. There's loads more width in the heel of the Endorphin Speed 3. This one just seems to stand out. It does everything for me and it does it very well. The SE Pacer, for example, has a similar width as the Adios 6 and 7 in terms of the midsole. And it's much lighter. That one's only about 215 grams in my UK size 11 and a half. But it feels nowhere near as propulsive or enjoyable and exciting as the Adidas shoe. At least for me, I mean, you've got a carbon plate in there, you've got nowhere near the bulk. Perhaps having a little bit of weight is actually a bit of an advantage in this respect. Maybe it's sort of like a pendulum type effect that having a shoe that's too light actually gives you none of that. So a careful balance perhaps is what's needed. Now, if we look at weight, the Takumi Sen 8 is actually quite a lot lighter than the Adios 6 and 7, though I found it to be just as good a shoe, if not better. Similar profile in terms of underfoot dimensions in the Sen 8, but a full Light Strike Pro midsole. So it's quite a different feel to this one. Slightly less stack in the heel of the Sen 8, but we do have those extra elements added into the shoe. The energy rod and the plate in the heel. Made it one of the best performing shoes for me over the last year and the outsole grip was something to die for. It really did work out well. So in terms of those two shoes from Adidas, they're right up there for me in terms of the features and the specifications. Just seemed to really speak to me whenever they were on foot. If you're enjoying the content on the channel, do help us out on an ad hoc basis by hitting us up with a super thanks down below if you've got a particular question that you want me to answer. Are there any other shoes from different manufacturers that have similar specs and dimensions? Yes, there are. The Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus. 
Again, this one worked really well for me over the 5 and 10k distance. Very similar underfoot midsole width here. I think we had about 11.3 centimeters in the sort of midfoot area and about 7.8 centimeters in the heel. So pretty much spot on against the Adidas Adi Zero offerings. A very similar drop to the Sen 8 as well from heel to toe in this one, only 5 millimeters. Is this why both of those shoes felt so good to me? The traction was exemplary as well in the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus. This rubber here is just so sticky and grippy. Absolutely fantastic. I ran some really fast 5K and 10K times in these shoes. So maybe I've struck gold there in terms of the actual specs and dimensions that work for me. Everything else just seemed to be a little bit lacking when I tried it at those distances. As we shift up to sort of higher distances from the half marathon to the full marathon, or at least what I consider for the full marathon or a long run, there's some interesting observations. The Alpha Fly was a great shoe for me with a low weight and a wider midsole surface area compared to lots of the other shoes I've talked about today. In fact, if we compare it up to the Adios 6 and 7, I think you've got over a centimeter extra midsole width in the Alpha Fly and two centimeters extra in the heel. But I never found that shoe to be as effective for me as I hoped that it would be. I think it's something to do with that four millimeter drop. It just never really felt as compelling to run quickly in it. When the Alpha Fly 2 came along, I hope that that additional drop up to eight millimeters would make the difference, but they increase the midsole width even more there in the heel. I think they've sort of offset it perhaps in the wrong way, rather than trying to refine what they already had. They've added more width to the shoe, and I think the extra bulk kind of equals things out a little bit between the Alpha Fly 1 and 2. It's certainly a shoe I consider for a marathon, but for anything else really, I think it's total overkill, and I always have done. Regular viewers of the channel will know that the Endorphin Pro 3 is a shoe that's worked extremely well for me so far. I'm really enjoying my miles in this one. It is a standout offering from Saucony in 2022. Only 244 grams or 8.6 ounces for this one. It just feels so much more natural than the Alpha Fly Next Percent or the sequel to that shoe. I think it just strikes a better balance between that midsole stack and the actual surface area underfoot. The width in the heel and the drop just make for a fantastic shoe in my estimations. I think it's top of the list for me right now. So what else is great about this one? I think it is a little bit down to the upper material used here. It really isn't present on foot at all, which is the same as the Adidas shoes. I just don't tend to notice those. We haven't got any of those ridiculous protrusions at the back here. I can't be dealing with that. People keep saying those are so the foam can compress more or they're more aerodynamic or something. I don't believe it. I just think it's a design choice a lot of the time. When looking at stats and performance, you cannot deny that the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 produced some really great results for me. Just seems to work with me this shoe. And let's not forget, I did pick this shoe up in an 11 and a half. I probably could have got away with an 11 here in the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. It did seem to be a little bit more roomy than the previous version. Consistent results. Every time I used it, it always produced, and so did I. Again, this is a shoe about balance. We've got a very minimal upper. There's generous forefoot comfort here. The width is quite considerable when compared to other shoes, but Nike have been a little bit more balanced in the heel. It's not quite so wide as the Alpha Fly. And it appears that when I'm running quickly at a performance level, I just don't really want that heel width. In fact, this shoe and the Endorphin Pro 3 are quite similar in terms of the specifications. Maybe that's why I like the Saucony shoes so much. The forefoot and the heel width and the actual weights of these two shoes are very, very close. Both pairs share a great number of attributes, so I think I've struck on something there. A couple of honorable mentions here, firstly to the Adi Zero Prime X. This isn't a shoe that I've raced in, nor would I, but as actually a enjoyable, exciting daily trainer, absolutely. Just felt brilliant at whatever distance I ran in it, and I felt brilliant the next day. I think that says a lot. Now, would I recommend people should run in a shoe that has 56 millimeters of heel stack all the time? Well, no, not unless you're head of a Kiss and Gene Simmons Appreciation Society. Though we have similar midsole widths here in the forefoot and the heel as the rest of the Adi Zero lineup. In fact, the width in the heel of the Adios 7 and the Prime X is 
pretty much exactly the same. It's kind of blown my mind a little bit. There's a little bit of extra width in the forefoot area, but I was not expecting that result in the heel. This model has the most effortless running experience on offer than any other shoe. Even the upper fit was really great for me in the Primax. So I certainly think that Adidas shoes have got the better of all the other manufacturers right now, at least for me. I've heard a few people having some issues with comfort with this one, but it was dynamite for me. Honorable mentions too for the Pegasus 39 and the Tempo Next Percent from Nike. Those shoes have impressed me over the last few years, both of them using different formulas of React in the heel of the Tempo Next Percent and the whole midsole of the Pegasus 39. And both shoes use some type of Nike Air unit, Air Zoom, Zoom Air, you catch my drift. Both of those shoes hark back to vintage Nike designs of a few years ago. Certainly the best models that they've produced of recent time. So a bit of a walkthrough there of some of the shoes that work for me and I think I've managed to pick out some very specific specs, features and functionality of them that starts to make sense now to me. It's some things I can look out for in the future that may crop up. Certain shoes might really speak to me or work well for me and get the best performance from me. Let me know what shoes, maybe models or manufacturers in general, get the best out of you down in the comments. Musical interlude time. A uh, great one here. I think a label has released the complete Jerry Lee Lewis Sun recordings. I think it's just come out by the looks of it and there's loads of tracks on it. I think it's about six CDs worth or something. So lots and lots of tunes to experience here. Particularly liking the old one, Lewis Boogie. It's kind of talking about himself really how he plays the Lewis Boogie in that very characterful piano playing style he has. His vocal style was just so characterful. He's up and down. He sounds unstable. It's not like someone's trying to make their way across the bar with like a tray of about 10 pints and at several points they've got to navigate an area full of Lego bricks. That's the feel that I get from Jerry Lee Lewis's voice and his delivery. I love these recordings. It's all the people in a room at once. They just sound so much better for it. Rock and roll just sounds terrible and almost like it's been sanitized or something when you get all these overdubs and everything. You want everybody in the room at at once and get it warts and all. Rock and Roll Ruby is another really great track from this compilation. I remember that featuring, I think, in a Johnny Cash biopic at some point. Or was it the J. Lee Lewis one? I can't remember. It's quite good, actually. You should go and check it out. Dennis Quaid is a fantastic Jerry Lee. Over the top and wild, but that's kind of what you want. I do like that the tracks are actually listed as Jerry Lee Lewis and his pumping piano, <laughs> which is quite humorous. Go and check this one out, guys. The complete Jerry Lee Lewis Sun collection. Thanks for tuning the dial over to Ed Bud running shoe reviews always appreciated if you're yet to do so hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications we're closing towards 50,000 subscribers you could be the one to push us over the edge give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you